Hey there everyone, this is Matt Heimlich, and I'm here today to help show off a new modifier that user is working on called the Delta Mush. Now, if you follow the CG industry outside of Blender, you may have heard this term before. Uh, around SIGGRAPH last year, a company called Rhythm and Hughes released a video of their proprietary 3D software called Voodoo. Uh, one of the tools they showed off was this Delta Mush. This is a tool that makes up a really big part of their skinning and rigging workflow. Um, and we are just now getting a little taste of it here in Blender, thanks to a developer named Jack Simpson, uh, who goes by Sazerac on the forums and on IRC. So I have this really simple scene set up where I have a couple of objects. The first one that you see here is just to basically show off what's going on in the modifier. Uh, and on another layer, I have a rig that's probably a little closer to something that you would see in production. Um, so first I'm going to show off what this does, then I'm going to explain how it works, and then we're going to jump over into the other layer and take a look at how it might be used in more of a production environment. So as you can see here, I've got this uh, lumpy looking sphere, and it's got a whole bunch of bones all over it. If I hop into weight paint mode, you'll see how my uh, weights are painted here. Okay, so we take a look, you can see that the weights are really ugly. It's basically just a circle around each of these bones. And if I go back into pose mode and move this, you can see what's going on. Basically just this really ugly deformation with uh, perfectly sharp fall-offs. Something you probably never actually want to see uh, in a rig. So I'm just going to move some of these around two different positions and we will use this to kind of take a look at how this modifier works. So as you can see I've got my armature modifier here and I'm just going to drop a delta mush modifier right underneath it. Now immediately you can see something happening but uh, this isn't quite correct because we haven't set everything up yet. Uh, so first things first, before you do anything else, you do have to clear out your animations and uh, deformations and stuff. So we've got our base shape here, and the first thing we're going to do is hit bind. So we've got our bind set, and now we can start moving points around. And again, as you can see, there's a little bit of smoothing happening, not quite uh, what we want to see yet. So we'll hop back into the object, and as you can see, you have two variables here when you're working with the modifier. You have repeat and you have factor. Factor is how much smoothing is happening in each step, and repeat is how many times you're repeating the operation. Factor has a hard limit of one, but you can put it to a higher number. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going anywhere beyond two, because if you start to get up into 2.5 or three, you can see it starts to kind of thrash your mesh. So we're going to leave this at 1 for right now and just increase the repeat number. So as we increase that, you can see we have the falloffs for each of these bones being smoothed out. Now how this is different from a normal smoothing modifier is if you look at the rest of the mesh and even the places where the smoothing is occurring, you'll see that those lumpy surface details are completely preserved. Uh, no volume is lost in the rest of the mesh. But we're basically getting free, nice weight painting here. Um, and as you'll notice, it is real time. Um, if you go really high on the repeat, it can start to kind of bog down your system. And this is actually even a little slower than it would normally be because I'm recording at the same time. Um, but even with relatively high poly counts and a pretty high repeat factor, I'll put this up to something crazy like 300. You can see that it's still very much interactive. I'll drop this back down to something more reasonable like 35. So that is how this works. As you can see, you can continue to make changes while this modifier is on. and all your new changes will properly be smoothed out. So what's going on here? Basically what is happening, we'll go ahead and clear everything out. If you hit display smoothing only, you'll see that it is smoothing out your details here. 
and as I turn this up, more and more of it is smooth. So what happens when you hit that bind button at the beginning is that it takes the positions of all of your vertices, does the smoothing, and stores the relative offset between the smooth position and the base position. When you then animate, when it gets to your final pose, it then smooths again using the same smoothing algorithm, uh, but reprojects those points back the relative amount that they were stored at the beginning. So that is what allows it to, if we turn off smoothing only, to store those kind of surface details and then reproject them at any point in the animation pipeline. So we'll go ahead and clear that again. So that's what's going on behind the scenes. So we'll hop into the second layer now and take a look at uh, a more complicated setup. So here in layer two, we've got this kind of creature looking arm. Um, and it's actually a really good testing case for this because it has these long fingers with these big knuckles and it has this kind of membrane between the upper arm and the lower arm. Um, now, normally this is something where you would probably add a couple of extra bones in here to help with the deformation of this webbing. So all I've done for this so far is do a set parent with automatic weights. And after that, I hopped into weight paint mode and I limited the weights using the weights limit total. Um, and I've limited them to one. So as you'll see, we get these really ugly fall offs here in the weight paint. You can see them down here as well. It's a really abrupt fall off. Um, definitely not what you would want to see in a normal weight painting. And indeed, if we hop back into pose mode on these bones and uh, animate it, you'll see we get these really ugly deformations going on. And I actually already have a delta mush on here. So this is without delta mush now. You can see we get this really ugly collapsing uh, in the membrane there. If I turn on wire mode, You can see the elbow's not that bad, but it still has a lot of stretching going on. We'll move down here to the wrist. And you can see that really ugly kind of candy wrapper effect there as we rotate the wrist. You can rotate the thumb out. Between thumb and forefinger is another area that's pretty common to have really ugly uh, rigging artifacts or skinning artifacts. So we'll rotate that out. You can see we get these really ugly artifacts in here and the texture, there is a normal map on this object. The texture just gets completely stretched and ruined. We'll go down here around the knuckles. You can see you get really ugly stretching there in the knuckle as well. So we will go ahead and add a delta mush modifier on here. First thing we're going to do is hit bind because it's in its rest pose. And we'll set this to something like 35 with a factor of 1.5. Well, not 350, 35. And let's go ahead and take a look again at what we're getting. So if we go ahead and rotate this out, you can see that already we're getting a much nicer interpolation of the UV map here. So the UVs are preserved very nicely with this modifier. We'll go up to the wrist and do a rotation. You can see that that ugly uh, stretching and candy wrapper is completely gone. And let's take a look at the knuckles now. You can see that that knuckle deformation is much cleaner, uh, especially you can see the normal map actually staying on the knuckle area rather than kind of sliding down the finger as we rotate. You can kind of yeah, see the difference there. It also helps with that uh, if you're using quaternions in your deformations, it helps with the quaternion bulge that kind of happens around joints as you rotate. And finally, let's go up here. Now, this is probably going to need a bit more smoothing to clean this area up because this is obviously not at all how you would rig something like this. Um, but as you can already see, it's much cleaner than it was without the delta mush at all. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. You can see the difference. 
fixes a lot of that interpenetration, even at this low level. So if we crank this up to something ridiculous, like if we do 10 times this, you can see that it is already cleaning up that, uh, that membrane quite a bit. We can move in both directions and already get really nice smoothing going on here. Now, you normally wouldn't want to set your iterations to something this high. In fact, the soft limit, I think, is 200, but you can go higher than that if you type in. Yeah, if you just uh, use the slider, it stops at 200. But as you saw, even at 350, it was still, uh, you know, we had a bit of slowdown, and some of that was caused, of course, by the recording, um, but it was still very usable. So that was an example with just about the worst weight painting that uh, you could possibly come up with where everything is weighted to just a single bone. Um, if we go in and do automatic weights and don't limit, um, you'll see that we actually get a very nice deformation just right off the bat with the delta mush. So we can bend that arm and we'll compare that to without. So as you can see without, we get that uh, quaternion bulging around the elbow. We get some texture stretching down here in the arm. But turning it on kind of smooths all of those anomalies out. Same thing down here around the wrist. Everything deforms nicely. It'll probably be most obvious where that's useful around here as we turn this on. You can see this is with, this is without. Without, you get this really ugly texture stretching in between the webbing of the fingers. Turning it on automatically smooths out all of these ugly deformations and uh, really preserves the integrity of that normal map. So this has just been a really short example showing where this is a useful tool. Um, you can kind of think of it as a mesh post process for uh, fixing ugly skinning. It can be used in a lot of places to smooth out anomalies that uh, you either don't have time to fix with proper weight painting, or in some cases there are anomalies that you simply cannot fix with weight painting that Delta Mush will take care of for you automatically. You have some other options up here, as you see, you can apply, apply a shape key, and those are pretty standard for modifiers, but they're especially helpful here, um, especially the apply a shape key. What you can do is set a shape and then use the modifier to get it to a point that you want, apply a shape key, and then use that shape key as a corrective shape driven by the bones. So it can be useful even in cases like uh, game art where obviously most game engines probably don't have the delta much built into them, um, but a lot of them do support shape keys. So you can use the delta much within Blender, apply a shape, and use that as a corrective shape within the game engine itself. Um, basically, this is a really exciting tool. Uh, if you're a rigger or a skinner um, or an animator, this could potentially be a big time saver for your workflow. Before I finish up here, I'd like to thank Jack Simpson for letting me help him test this uh, over the past couple of weeks and taking my uh, advice and questions and everything into account while uh, designing each iteration of the tool. I'm really happy with uh, how it's turned out. It's, it's already completely changed the way that I will do rigging and skinning in Blender. Um, and hopefully once the code cleanup and code review is done, we will see this in Master very soon. I hope this video was helpful, kind of uh, explaining how this tool works and where it'll be useful in your workflow. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to either leave them in the uh, Delta Mush thread where either myself or Jack can answer them, um, or even just on the video itself and I'll answer them. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.